this year is not over yet. Mm. We know that our army, our generals, our soldiers are doing everything possible and impossible to push forward. We already have seen that they were having some um, quiet successes at the Bakhmut region. And we hope that uh, during this year we will achieve our military goals. There is also a very important point on the counteroffensive that for us it is very personal that people who are fighting at the front it is not just some people somebody's people it is our people now after a long campaign by president zelensky it looks like he'll finally be getting his hands on some long-range missiles from the united states it's being reported that president biden has agreed a deal to provide ukraine with the weapons that can hit distances of up to 190 miles President Zelensky has been on something of a tour of allies trying to shore up support uh, from the international community. Let's speak with Ukrainian MP and leader of the political party Holos. That's Kira Ruddick. Kira, good morning to you. Good morning, Callum. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and it's great to speak to you. Uh, in your assessment, Kira, to, to what extent is President Zelensky really having to, to work hard at this point to, to boost international support? Is it more difficult now than it has been up till now? Well, of course, we feel like um, there is some kind of, uh, I wouldn't say fatigue, but also people are more concentrated on their own life rather than uh, constantly being emotionally involved with what is going on in Ukraine. And this is only natural. And uh, right now, when we are uh, looking forward for the year 2024, we also understand that it will be a year of elections. And, you know, during the elections, politicians tend to polarize and use all the weapons that are in their possessions. I would say weapons in brackets, but mm. um, uh, we understand that right now is the time to ensure the long-term support that would be uh, as uh, politically neutral uh, as possible so that we can go through the 2024 with uh, the weapons, supplies, uh, and financial aid that we desperately need. This is why this is a chance for President Zelensky before all the campaigns started to uh, talk to the leaders who definitely support us and see what can be done um, written on paper, signed and sealed, so we would know how 2024 looks for us in terms of uh, the weapons delivery, in terms of the training of our soldiers, uh, and of course, in terms of the financial aid. What would you say to those who assess the current situation when it comes to international support and the war, that actually international support, whether it be weapons or financial aid or whatever, is simply backing a stalemate, that the counteroffensive is not progressing as quickly as it should. And so therefore, this is sort of support for, for the status quo in some ways. Well, you know, Callum, uh, of course, if you ask any Ukrainian, we would say we wanted all possible weapons and mm. supplies from all countries that are not at war right now delivered on 24th of February last year, right? because it's a matter of life and death for us. But also we understand that many things uh, not only take political will, but also uh, have to have logistical preparation and uh, uh, just physical preparation. Same as with the training of the pilots, same as with like, just physical delivery of the weapons, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we are truly grateful for what we have received and for all the agreements that we have for additional support. Of course, we would need more and we would want more, but, we all, but also we have seen uh, how this support evolutionized over time from, if you remember 18 months ago, when most of the countries did not agree to give us any heavy weapons, uh, just only the helmets and, um, um, and the guns. And right now, we already at the point where we are getting fighter jets, we are getting tanks, we are getting long range missiles. So we understand that it takes time. Mm -hmm. And we do hope that um, that this support would evolutionize further as well. About the counteroffensive, I would like to refer to the last year when during the summer, there were many preparations under the hood and all the massive uh, loud victories we have seen at the late autumn, the liberation of Kherson, of Kharkiv region. So uh, this year is not over yet. Mm. We know that our 
army, our generals, our soldiers are doing everything possible and impossible to push forward. We already have seen that they were having some um, quiet successes at the Bakhmut region. And we hope that uh, during this year we will achieve our military goals. There is also a very important point on the counteroffensive that for us it is very personal that people who are fighting at the front it is not just some people somebody's people it is our people as of right now 80 percent of ukrainian families have somebody member of the family or somebody very close fighting at the front so when we are saying the speed of the counteroffensive we know exactly the people who are fighting there so imagine somebody that you care about a lot, like the most in the world, that you are waiting for messages every single morning. And imagine that the word counteroffensive for you means that this person would have to get out of the trench and march forward onto the mines and bullets. And then I guess one would be taking it very differently and hoping that our generals not only work on, the, on delivering the goal, uh, and achieving it, but also on making sure that we have minimal possible losses and we preserve people's lives. Kira, it's always good to catch up with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you. That is Kira Ruddock, Ukrainian MP and leader of the Holos political party.